All right, so today we are working on this 2010 Chevy Malibu, and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use the PicoScope to do testing on some DC motor circuits, specifically looking at the current. So today we're gonna use the power windows. I've got Pro Demand pulled up right here. This is the power window circuit. And I wanted to show you that there's a couple easy locations that we can go to so that we can test all four of the motors on all four of the windows on this. So at first glance, when you look at the fuse box, you see this power window 50 amp fuse, which you can get some signal from, but notice it goes into a logic circuit. So it's going into a computer um, rather than going directly to the motors. So you get a little bit of loss there. You don't get the full current that you're, that you're going to be pulling from those motors. So you don't wanna do, you don't wanna do this fuse over here. It's actually this fuse here that feeds power directly to the switch right there. And then from there feeds over to that motor and then the other individual motors. So we're gonna wanna go uh, to that fuse if we can, but notice it's under the center console. It's kind of hard to get to. So instead, um, that fuse feeds this yellow wire. And my idea was to go to the master window switch right here and see if we can't just pull it off a little bit and get direct access to this yellow wire and throw our amp clamp around it. So that's what we're gonna try first. Okay, so here is that master window switch on the driver's door and there was just two little torque screws down in there that were pretty easy to pull out. And then once I did that, this assembly just comes out like that. And there is that yellow wire that we're hoping to get around. So we've got our 60 amp clamp right here. We're gonna turn it on to the the first setting, which is a 20 amp setting. And we'll pick that setting when we go back to the Pico scope. And we're gonna put that around this wire. Okay. And then we'll go back and set up our Pico scope and then we'll zero that out. Okay, so we've got the Pico scope seven program pulled up. Um, first thing we gotta do is we're we're not using channel B on this, so we're gonna turn that off. And then on channel A, we're gonna select the probe. And there is that 60 amp clamp. Pick the 20 amp mode setting. And then while we're live here, it looks like that amp clamp is already zeroed out. But if it wasn't, you just go push that zero button on the amp clamp. And then we're gonna be wanting to watch all four of the windows operating here. So we need to have enough time to do that. So we're gonna turn up our time base to probably five or 10 seconds per division. And that way we have time to go back over to the master window switch, go down, up with that window, down, up with the other windows, and then we can come back and analyze what we have. Okay, so we're back over here at the window switch. We gotta make sure we have the key to the on position and then we're just gonna roll the driver's window down all the way. And then I'm gonna wait just a couple seconds. And then I'm gonna go up all the way. Wait a couple seconds. And I'm gonna do the passenger front window down all the way. Wait a couple seconds. Up all the way. And the reason I'm waiting in between these different things is so that when I go back to the PicoScope, I can define which event is which. Now the back driver's side window down. Wait a couple seconds. Up. And then passenger rear down. and then up. All right, let's go see what we got. Okay, back here at our laptop, you can see that we've captured all of the events for all of the windows. So this is the driver's front window going down. We took the brake, there it is going up, and then the next window down and up, next window down and up, and the next window down and up. So we'll go settle in at a workbench real quick and we'll analyze what our findings are. All right, so we're back here at my desk now so that we can zoom in and determine a few things about these window motors. So the first reason I like to do this uh, specific test, rather than just testing one motor at a time, 
and doing all four when you're looking at windows is I know that the driver's window and the passenger window are the same size motor, same size window. Same thing with the back two. So if one of them were bad, then I can use the other one as a reference of what good should look like. So that's the reason I like to look at these. Uh, not that you can't do a specific test on one. Uh, we got lucky today and we were able to find that yellow wire that feeds power to all of them. On some vehicles, it might be a little bit more difficult to access some of those things. So you might just end up testing uh, power to one of the window motors at a time and, and that's fine. But if you have the capability of doing something like this, it's really nice. Uh, this works also if you're doing like power window uh, or power door locks. Um, and then obviously the things that we're analyzing in here work for all DC motors. So you can use this or these concepts that we're learning on fuel pumps, washer pumps, window motors, uh, wiper motors, all those different things. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on this first event right here, which is the driver's front window going down. And actually, before we zoom in, let's just let's just take a look at the down versus the up. The current is significantly different. So we're just going to take a quick, um, you know, just a general measurement right here. So we're in the range of like, you know, from like two up to three amps on the down. And then when we go up, we're more in the five amp range. So that you can see when the motor works harder, which it's harder to push the window up than it is to go down. When the motor works harder, you can see that it draws more current. Okay, so that's a that's a concept that you should have down before you start doing this kind of this kind of testing. So that's pretty evident there. And then when we compare the front two windows in general, I mean, you can see that the passenger window was pulling a little bit more current on the down and in the up. So we might potentially be uh, looking at uh, maybe a binding uh, window regulator or a dirty track or something like that that's making this motor have to work just a little bit harder than this one over here. Um, I didn't notice it going that much slower, so I don't think it's a big deal. But if you do have a motor that seems to be, go or a window that seems to be going down really slow, then that's the kind of thing you're looking at is is comparing amounts of current that it's drawing um, to a known good. Now, in general, window motors, even actually most of the motors on your car that we that we listed, like wiper motors, uh, windows, fuel pumps, all those kinds of things, the current that you're going to be looking at is going to be somewhere between like three and eight, maybe as high as ten on some of them as far as amperage goes. When you see it kind of go over that, that's really when you start seeing a, a excessive like physical resistance or binding of something that's causing the motor to work really hard. So, but it's really nice when you have a, a known good to compare to. All right, so let's zoom back in like we were a second ago. And while we're zoomed in, what we can see obviously is a little bit more detail. So now we can actually get real measurements on what this current is. So we could use these, these little cursors here to get averages in certain locations, or we could pull out uh, a measurement over here, and we could, um, we could do like the average or the mean between two points. So it already pulls down the measurement right here, but right now it's measuring like the whole thing. Uh, so what I wanna do is I wanna pull over these bottom cursors and let's say I want to measure the current between these two points and then I'll just click down here and tell it to measure between the rulers and now you can see that between those two points it's 3.817 amps and then we could just move those over to a different location and get those. So there's a few different ways you can you can take those measurements. So as far as current goes this seems seems normal right it's in the range that we were expecting. Right here at the beginning our amperage shot up really high because obviously it takes a little bit more effort to get things moving right off the bat. That's that's true for most things, even my body. So um, so we see it struggle real, quite a bit for a little bit. It went up to 16 amps here, and then it got easier. And this little bump, I'm not really sure what this was. Maybe it's working through a, a joint or something on the regulator and it just got harder for a second. So if this was an anomaly, like it was only happening on this window, but the other window it wasn't happening, then you'd be concerned about this. But if both windows are doing the exact same thing, this is this doesn't concern me. 
All right, then we see all these averages. And then at the end, when the window reached the bottom of the track, you see amperage skyrockets, and that's because it's still trying to work, but there's nowhere for it to go. So amperage climbs, 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 and then it kind of tapers off, and that's because there is a circuit breaker in there to prevent uh, current spiking too high. So, and then I let off the switch, and we're back to zero. Okay? A um, couple more things we can do in here. If we zoom in really far, we can actually see the individual commutator segments of the motor where the brushes are riding. And, you know, if you have a perfect motor, perfect commutators, perfect brushes, you probably won't see much definition between these bumps, and that would be a good thing. But most of the time, you can see some sort of like a pattern that's happening in here. So specifically, I'm looking at, let's pull our cursors back out. I'm seeing this, this one right here kind of dips a little bit lower. And then we see two that dip low, and then we see that single one again, and then two, single, two. So there's kind of a pattern there. So I'm going to draw or pull out the other cursor to the next time I see that drop. And then I'm going to count the bumps that I see between those two rulers. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so I'm thinking that this motor has ten commutator bars. And now that I have those rulers out, I have an RPM measurement. So that motor is rotating at 3,831 RPM. I have my current. And with those two things, RPM and current, you have a really good idea of how this motor is working um, and what it's working against. The other thing I can look at is, as I'm looking at these commutator bars, you can tell when you have one that is like a commutator segment that's worn out or a brush that's starting to wear out because you'll start seeing these these bumps be very, very um, different from each other. And as I see more and more of that, you can start telling your customer that it's getting about time to replace that motor. And maybe it's already failed, you know, but you can catch those things early, especially on fuel pumps. You can give customers forewarning before they're just stranded on the side of the road by looking at these commutator segments. Okay. Um, so yeah, you could do that with each one of these individual events and, uh, that's how you analyze these, these DC motors on the, on the current. So there you go.